going to show you how to cut out a photo for your magazine design front cover. Okay, so I'm just using an image that I got from the internet, but you'll be using the photo that you have taken at school in the studio setup. Right. So the first thing you do, you need to open your image into Photoshop. If you're not sure how to do that, see another tutorial on the channel. The first thing you need to do to this photo is to go to image, adjustments and go to level. So exactly like you would if you were just editing a photo because your image is going to be unedited. The easiest way to um, edit your photo in a studio setting is to make the background and your actual model as different as possible. So you want there to be a big contrast between the background and your model. This image that I've gotten is already edited, so I don't really have to do too much, but just for this purpose, I'll show you what I mean about increasing the background to more of a white. Okay, so just say um, something like that, although my model is slightly overexposed. So let me just fix that. Okay, you'll see the outline of uh, the model here is now really distinct. All right, if yours is still um, a bit blended together, you can go to brightness and contrast. So image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and just increase the contrast. So that will increase the difference between the blacks and the whites in your image and it might help. The tool that you will be using to cut out your um, model is the tool on the toolbar on the, the left-hand side um, called the Quick Selection Tool. Okay, so it's four down, all right? And then up here, you'll see that there's a size of your brush, okay? At the moment, if we hover over our image, you'll see that that brush size is really, really small. So we can increase that. We don't want it to increase it too big. So let's try this. Yeah, that's about right. Um, and we can also uh, zoom in a bit more and that means we might need to decrease the brush size. But for now, we'll just keep it at around 40. All right. And we're going to click and drag over our model and you'll see that it's automatically selecting the model apart from the background, okay, because of that contrast. So once you've got your model in and you want to try and get it as clear as possible you'll see that due to her hair it's a bit of an issue but that's fine we'll fix that up later with the um, eraser tool but get as close as you can I'd rather you have more of the background in than not <clears throat> you'll see here that I went a little bit too fast and I've now got um, all of the background selecting which is what not what you want to do so just hit command Z or control Z if you're on a uh, PC all right and we'll start again sometimes you can let go of your mouse and then continue on that means um, it might make it a little bit easier for you You'd obviously take quite a bit more time than I am now um, because you want to try and get it as clear as possible. Um, you can zoom in using Command Plus uh, or Control Plus, okay, because that might be able to help you as well. And you can see that I missed some of the hair here, so I might just increase that a bit slightly. Um, and I have missed this kind of hair trend all here. So I can decrease my size in the brush at the top and see if I can get as much of that as I can. That's fine that I've got the background there because I'll use the eraser tool on that. Okay. So it's important to note that when you're taking your photo that you want to try and have the model's hair as um, kind of straight as possible, I guess, or not have all those kind of flyaways. Um, but if you've already done uh, taking your photo, then that's fine. I have missed some of the hair on the side here. Um, there we go. So I can try and get a little bit more of that. That's probably a bit better. And I'll use the eraser for the rest. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out using Command minus or Control minus on a PC.
clicking on it. And I've got the basic outline of my model, except I have missed her pinky finger. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do now is hit Command X or Control X, which is going to cut out my model. And you'll see that I've now got her missing. All right, I'm going to click on the Select tool on the upper left-hand corner and then create a new layer on our layers, layers palette. And then I'm going to hit Command V or Paste in the Edit menu. And then I've got that cut out. Um, on a different layer and I can delete the layer behind it. Okay, so double click on your background layer, press OK to unlock it, then using the select tool, select the background and hit delete on your keyboard. All right, you're going to see this checkered background behind your uh, model, which means there is no background color, which means when we save this photo as a PNG, file, there isn't going to be a white background when we uh, import it into InDesign, which is exactly what we want. So it should look, look like this when you are saving it. The last thing you need to do now is use the eraser tool to make sure you're um, fixing up these edges and making it look as smooth as possible because we don't want it, look like, we don't want it to look like we've cut it out um, and put it on a new background color. So to do this, you'll need to zoom in. Okay, and I'll do it here on the hair um, and click on the eraser tool, which is on the left hand side. You can click just E on your keyboard as well and it'll swap to the eraser tool from the select tool. Again, you'll see that we have a brush size, but this time we want to make sure we've got like a blurred brush. Okay, and what that means is instead of having a really harsh outline where you use the eraser tool, you'll just have kind of like a um, blurred look so it doesn't look so obvious. Okay, we don't want a brush that big, we want it probably a bit smaller and we don't want to be erasing exactly on the hair, we want to be erasing next to it and I'll show you why. So if we zoom in, if we erase next to it, you'll see that only a little bit is getting taken away, that way it's going to look super natural and not like we've um, gone in with an eraser. Okay, so we want this to look as natural as possible. You can do this on this inside bit here where the background still was, okay, um, and that way it looks kind of as natural as possible right, and you can't see any edges. Right. So the idea is to go around just like that, um, and have a look at the edges of your entire image. So you'll see up the top here, especially with hair, that it looks really bumpy. And when we import that into InDesign, when we create our cover, it's not going to look great. So if I go around like this, just smoothing it out, still trying to keep it as natural as possible. Again, I'm going quite fast, which isn't um, great when you're doing this, but you'd obviously uh, spend a bit more time doing it. I'll quickly just do a bit more over here, but you get the general idea. So you want everything to be as smooth as possible so it doesn't look like you've been um, editing it. Okay. Um, I think down here also we'll just fix this up. All right. And obviously you'd be taking your time and not doing what I'm doing, which is much too rushed. Okay, so just for this purpose, let's say that's great and everything else looks fine. All right, so all you need to do now in uh, Photoshop is save this image. And it's really important that you save it as a PNG file. So we go to File, Save As, decide where we want to save it. Save it as um, whatever file name that you like, but make sure it's a different file name to your original file so I'll just call this cut out model All right and we need to change the format to a PNG All right and click save a little dialog box come up uh, comes up and asks you if you want it to be interlaced or not just keep it on none and press OK and then now that is saved as a PNG file ready for you to import into InDesign 
If you have a check out of the uh, channel, the Lindale Media channel, you'll be able to see a tutorial on how to actually edit your magazine cover in InDesign.